Hi guys and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now while checking out this little VNA that got sent to me, I think I found a problem with my main VHF and UHF antenna. Anyhow, this will be a short video because I've covered many VNAs on the channel before. And to be honest, apart from the case, it's nothing new that we've not seen before. So this little VNA covers from 10 kilohertz to 1.5 gigahertz. So useful for most of us hams that use HF VHF and UHF. Now you do get a nice little carry case where you can keep all of those little extras that you get. Now those extras consist of calibration connectors which are needed to perform the calibration procedure. Now I'll go through that in a moment. We then get a couple of short SMA patch cables. Now these are used if you want to measure something like a band pass filter or even a band stop filter or anything that goes in between the two connections. Now what I do like about this VNA is that it comes with this pre-installed green rubber boot. It gives that feel that this would be protected if you drop it or banged it. Now I'm not sure how they got this rubber boot on, but I'm not going to try and get it off as I don't want to risk splitting it. Now two SMA ports, as you would expect on a nano VNA, that's port one and port two, or S11 and S21. And of course, S11 is where you would attach an antenna if you was measuring SWR, for example. Now nothing on the back apart from a label saying that this is a B-side P5 vector network analyzer. I presume B-side is the manufacturer. Now on the top right, we have a power button and the famous function wheel, which is essentially a jog wheel with a push switch. Now incidentally, turning it on was quite easy, but to turn it off, I had to hold that power button down for quite some time. So not sure if there's an issue there or whether that's by design. Now on the top left, under this little rubber flap, we have a USB-C socket, which is used for charging the internal rechargeable battery, which apparently is a 3000 milliamp hour lithium battery. The USB-C socket can also be used to connect to a computer so that you can use the Nano VNA software. Now we'll take a look at that a bit later on as well, just to make sure that it works. Now you will also find a micro SD card slot and it already comes pre-installed with a micro SD card or TF card as it's sometimes called. Now the included micro SD card, it's only four gigabyte, but it's used to store screenshots and calibration data. Now the screenshots are quite useful because if you're out in the field and you're measuring an antenna, you can just take a quick screenshot and then when you're back in the shack or at home or wherever, you can just refer back to that screenshot so you can see the measurements that you took earlier. Now the menu system is exactly the same that we've seen before on other VNAs that's similar to this. And there's lots of YouTube videos already covering this, but let's just take a quick look at the version page so we can get an idea of where the firmware come from. Now if we quickly refer back to the user's manual or single sheet of paper that came with this VNA, it states that this device is based on the modified firmware of the open source project Nano VNA-H4. It also suggests to take a look at the following GitHub page for more information on the firmware. However, looking at this GitHub page, it appears the latest firmware release was around four years ago. But then if we look back again on the version screen of this device, the version build number is way higher and it has a build date of July this year. So the firmware appears to have some other mods or it was at least compiled just this year. Anyhow, let's quickly do the calibration and then I'll test an antenna using the SWR measurement feature of this VNA. So now we're in the calibration screen and now we need to attach the open SMA plug to S11. We then press the open button and once that's done, we then connect the short SMA plug and then press short. We then attach the load SMA plug and press load. And then lastly, we need to do the through calibration, which requires one of the SMA patch cables to go between S11 and S21 ports. Now, if you wanted to calibrate to test another device, like a bandpass filter, then simply attach both of those SMA patch cables and then use the included adapter between the SMA patch cables before pressing the through button. Now, you'd also need to perform the same calibration with one of the SMA patch cables attached for open, short and load. But for regular antenna testing, you don't need to do that. You can just attach the calibration plugs to S11 when doing the calibration procedure. Okay, so let's test my outside VHF and UHF antenna. First, I want to remove all the traces apart from trace one, and then we'll set the trace one to show SWR. We then need to set a start and end frequency. And first I'll just cover the two meter band. 
Well, that's not bad reading at all. It covers the entire 2 meter band with an SWR of 1.5 or less. Now let's test the 70 centimeter band up between 430 and 440 megahertz. Again, SWR of 1.5 or less across the whole band. Now my outside antenna also supports receive and transmitting on the 23 centimeter band, which is at the top end of 1.2 gigahertz. So for this, I'll show you the results using the software as I wanted to check if the Nano VNA software was working okay with this device. Okay, so two meters looks good and it appears the Nano VNA software is working perfectly and shows the same values as what the device actually did. 70 centimeters also appears to look good and the same as what was shown on the actual device. Now this is the 23 centimeter band and according to this measurement using this software, which by the way was the same as the device itself, it shows that the SWR is around two across the entire band. Now I had thought whether the antenna has a fault or whether there's actually an issue with this VLA, but after checking with another trusted analyzer, the measurement was exactly the same for all the bands tested. So it looks like I'll have to get another antenna to replace this one. Now I do not really use 23 centimeters, only to listen to the contest sometimes. So what antenna should I go with next? Let me know down in the comments below which one you would recommend. Now personally, I'm thinking something like a Diamond X5000 or maybe the V2000, which provides two, 70 and six meters, or even a Diamond X510, which is only two and 70, but has nice and high gain. Again, let me know what you'd go for down in the comments below. Now there's many types of these VNAs on the market and it feels like a new one comes out each week and they all pretty much do the same. So let me know what you think about this one. Now what I do like about this one is that it has this rubber boot. It makes it feel a lot more protected than the ones that I've had in the past. In fact, the very first Nano VNA I had was literally just two PCBs stuck together with all the components exposed. And until the next video, thanks for watching, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video.